everybody. This is Paul for Replica Gun Reviews again. Um, it's Saturday. Um, hope you're all having a good day. It's nice and warm out actually today. Um, as I said in my last video, it's been rainy and cold these past few days here where I live. Um, but today is actually feeling pretty good. Um, my last video, my last two videos, I did... Uh, the Makarov from the Umarex Legends series and also the PPKS from the Umarex Legends series. So today I decided to go off course a little bit and just uh, break up the monotony, I guess, and uh, go with something made by SIG. Um, it's a SIG Sauer M17 semi-automatic uh, .177 uh, blowback air pistol. Um, and I gotta say, this thing is a beast, man. Um, SIG really put some work into their guns, I gotta say. Um, it didn't come with the laser. I'll put a link in the description for the laser. Um, it's not a very expensive laser. It's a really cheap one, um, but it works well. Um, so I will put a link in the description for it. Um, but yeah, six hour, man. Um, I gotta say, one thing is weird about this gun, uh, before I move on. Um, normally I gather my info, like specs and everything up before the videos from Amazon, um, as to weight and everything. Um, but I don't know what's going on with this gun on Amazon. Um, a few, about a month ago I went to go buy this gun and it said that it couldn't be shipped to my area. Then a couple of weeks later, it could be shipped to my area, so I bought it, and as you can see, I got it. Now, when I go on Amazon and try to get it, it's not even on Amazon anymore. All you can get on Amazon are the extra magazines for this, or the rotary clips for this. Um, this does have a rifled barrel, so you can only shoot pellets through it. I'm not sure if you could shoot steel BBs through it, but... Um, and I, I don't think so. I think that it's just made for pellets, yeah. Um, it's a 20-round magazine. Um, here on the Sig Sauer website, um, under the specs section, it's uh, 1.7, I mean, 0 .17, uh, .177 caliber. Um, it goes up to 430 feet per second, so I guess not too bad. Uh, it's a little low, but... Um, it has an accessory rail, um, it says the sights are fixed, um, it has a 20 round pellet mag, um, this is the magazine here, uh, the mag release button is right there, um, and you release the mag. Um, this has a pretty ingenious magazine system, um, by the way the whole gun itself including the magazine I don't think I mentioned is 34 ounces it says here um, so that's how much it weighs um, and it says that it's overall length is 8 inches so um, anyway so yeah the mag release is right there um, you know you can see the Sig Sauer branding I'm not sure if you can see that well sorry about the lighting guys I gotta get light still um, as I said my channel's new so um, I'm progressing slightly but I'll get there soon I'll get the lights uh, this week uh, but yeah, as you can see, Sig Sauer's branding is there. Um, I believe, yeah, see they have it up here too. Um, Sig Sauer M17. Right now, this is, uh, it says here on the site, uh, SigSauer.com actually. Um, I'll put the link in the description that it is the current chosen gun for all official um, U.S. military branches except the Marine Corps which chose the M18 instead of the M17 so uh, I guess the Marines liked the M18 better but um I gotta say man out of all the pellet guns I have or BB guns or air guns uh, this thing is solid this thing feels official it has some hefty weight to it um it's fully metal uh, the grip is uh, well, it's fully metal underneath. Um, I think this top part might be like a plastic polymer over metal, but the grip has uh, this like rubbery uh, feeling indentation. It's not rubbery, it's like a plasticky grip type uh, texture. Um, but yeah, so uh, anyways, the mag release is there. Um, you have your safety here. Right now it's on safe. You pull it down, now it's on fire. Um, it is blowback, so you can rack the slide. Um, 
The hammer on this thing is not accessible um, when there is pellets. This is the hammer and it does go back and forth. Um, you just don't need to cock it or anything. It just does that on its own. Um, this uh, here is to take if you uh, you know you want to dismount if you want to take apart your gun and uh, clean it if you have a jam BB or anything you can actually take the rail off uh, take the slide off take the barrel out uh, clean the springs inside um, you can get yourself a .177 caliber gun cleaning kit um, I can put a link in the description to a cheap one. Um, but uh, let me show you this uh, magazine because this magazine is kind of ingenious. Um, I really, really love the way they chose to uh, have their CO2 loaded in this. Um, so you hit the mag release simply. Um, and as you can see right now I have no CO2 in there. There's no pellets. Um, so here is where the CO2 goes. Um, and this is the actual clip for all the pellets. Um, the pellet clip actually comes out of the mag. There's a little button right there. You just press it down and it pops out. Well, I didn't actually know that it flies out. That's the first time I actually let it fly out like that. But um, if I set this down, I can show you how it looks inside. Um, as you can see, it's a rotary magazine. So you put the pellets inside and as you pull the trigger, it spins and uh, feeds that way. Um, which I'll get to later because it does make the trigger feel a little weird when you're pulling this, uh, when you're shooting this thing. Um, but yeah, once you fill up your pellets, which I'll show you how to do later, um, you close this back up and you simply stick this back in. Uh, see it's slanted? The slanted part faces forward like that. Um, and to load CO2 into this, uh, as I always emphasize, First, get your standard CO2 cartridge, uh, 12 gram CO2 cartridge, get some Pell gun oil, and then you simply, it goes head first, so you put it in, uh, I think it goes head first, let me see, I'm not going to pierce it, but uh, it goes bottom first, alright, so it goes bottom first, so you put it in like that, and then all you do is just close this. And just flip it back up and it pierces on its own and that's it you don't have to screw anything just go like that and it pierces and that's it um i will demonstrate that when i get ready to load this thing and show you how to put pellets in it um of course i'm going to do some accuracy testing um i can't remember the fps of the macro that i just did i just put out that video this morning by the way guys i'll put the link in the end of the video for that um but uh, I believe it was more. I think it had a four, 480 feet per second muzzle velocity. I might be wrong. And this has, I think, what did it say? Let me see here. This says up to 430 feet per second. So I have to see that. I have to test that out. I'm going to use the exact same items that I used uh, on my last video. I used the PSP. Um, I'll take some of the tape off of that Galaxy S5 so I have some spots to shoot. Um, and I'll use a milk carton, of course, filled with water to see if we can penetrate all the way through or the water will stop them. Um, now that I have my BB trap, which came yesterday also, um, I can set up the water in a way that it won't... I don't have to set it up out my window anymore so that the water can spill outside. I could just put it in a bucket. Um, or a plastic uh, container, a storage container rather. Um, but um, yeah, so I want to do some penetration testing with this thing. I'm really curious. Um, I don't think that penetration testing is totally fair if you want to really use this as an experiment because uh, the Makarov shot steel BBs and this is shooting pellets. So, um, I mean, I guess I don't know if I never really thought about it if you want to call them the same thing or if they would cause the same damage or not. Um, I did notice that uh, most of the BBs that I've ever shot have never warped that I've seen anyway. They always look round when I find them, um, like they were when I shot them out. Uh, but the pellets, when I sh I've shot this gun only once before, I filled up the magazine the first time that I got it just to test it out, make sure it worked, um, and that was it. Um, 
So this video won't just be me, uh, you know, testing it. It'll be me actually using it for the second time as well. So, um, uh, so soon I'll show you how to get the pellets in there and the CO2 in there. And, um, and that's it really. Uh, we'll do some penetration testing, some accuracy testing. But um, this thing is solid. Uh, let me tell you how much it was. It cost me $119.99. So it's about $125 bucks on Amazon when it was on Amazon. Um, so uh, it's not that that expensive. I know $100 to everybody isn't like, you know, like cheap. You know, like to me it's not cheap. Um, but it was worth it. Um, I don't like the trigger system and I'll explain later. But uh let me load this thing up with some pellets and I will get back with you in a second. Okay guys, sorry for that. Uh, I got a message on my phone and I think it was about memory. I didn't catch it so I wanted to just stop the video and export it to my uh, hard drive real quick what I had so far. So um, I'm back now and I have uh, with me these are the pellets that I bought for the uh, M17. Uh, there's other brands out there. I just chose Winchester because it's, you know, Winchester is a classic name. Um, they're round nose. Uh, you get 500 uh, for 1218. Um, right now, uh, they're in stock, so you can get them. Um, you know, one day shipping, it's easy to get. Uh, I couldn't find a, I found a container a little bit bigger, but it was like a little, it looked like a, a milk carton full of these. I didn't want to get that. I, I'd rather have a metal container for these. Uh, that's just me. But uh, yeah, these are 1218. I'll put the link for this and the laser, which by the way is called, um, let me just see. Uh, actually, I don't have the laser. It's called Pinty. That's the company who made the laser, as you can see uh, right there. Pinty. Um, it was about 1118 or something like that, 1120 on Amazon. Um, you just put three batteries inside of it, and it's got a button right here. You just press on and off, and uh, that's it. The batteries in this one are dead. Um, so. I play with my cats all the time with this laser. Uh, of course, it's not loaded and it's always on safety. Um, but they love playing with the laser, so I killed it uh, playing with them. Um, yeah, I, I rarely shoot these things. You know, I shoot them to test them out when I get them, obviously, to make sure they work. Um, once in a blue, I'll bust them out and uh, shoot off some shots, you know, into the air or like at some cans or some bottles or whatever. But uh, that's about it. Um, but anyways, yeah, since I have now with the pellets, I have my standard 12 gram CO2 cartridge and I have the Pell gun oil. I will show you how to load this thing and get ready to fire it. So let me put these to the side. So um, as I said, here's the mag release. You just press it and the mag comes out. Set the gun down. There's another button right there. I I would hold it now that I know that it pops out. Um, so when you press it, it releases it. Um, then you set that down. Um, I would say never load the CO2 and then put pellets in. You know until you're ready to fire, just in case you know there's an accident or something like that. Um, but what you do to load this thing is first of all you. Uh, Hope you guys can see this. I, I hope the lighting's not too poor, but as you can see, it says open um, right there. So you just literally pop it open. It just flips open. Um, and you lay it down. Uh, you take your Winchester pellets or whatever brand pellets you chose to buy. Um, they look like this. Let's see if this can focus enough. Um, they tend to flatten when you hit hard surfaces. Uh, they're pretty light and small. Um, this holds 20 of them, so I'll probably skip uh, me loading all 20. So here, I'll show you a few anyway. You put them nose first, so you should always see that ball side. Sorry, I lost that one. That side facing uh, left goes 
first. Uh, so you load them up like that. That's two. Three. Four. One eternity later. Okay guys, almost done. Um, I just wanted to save the last two to show you how to uh, put them in. Um, obviously the first few are going to be still like that, but as you continue on you have to rotate them like that. So you just pull them down and then uh, you just put them in. Uh, I would definitely suggest buying the extra magazines because you don't want to have to do this every time took about two three minutes not long but still um, I like to just press them all down um, make sure they're all in there tight uh, before I do anything um, one thing I wanted to say as I mentioned before about the trigger that I didn't like was uh, when you pull the trigger obviously for this to fire this has to be lined up so once you have it loaded anyway now that it's fully loaded it has all 20 shots in it you shut this and that's it um, but one thing about the trigger is in order for it to fire it has to be like that in that position so sometimes when you pull the trigger it's not solid like it doesn't have uh, that just you know like solid feeling like it's gonna fire um, it feels loose because once in a blue it ends up like that and it has to, when you pull the trigger a little bit, it has to move it into that position and you can feel that looseness as it moves it into that position. So you'll pull the trigger twice basically to shoot once. Um, so uh, you can't shoot very fast with this thing. I wouldn't just be like bam 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 bam. You know, I would definitely take my time like between each shot. Um, but I've found that the first time I shot it, I think it still did the same thing anyway. It ended up like this. You pull the trigger a little bit, it's super loose, and you can feel it getting it into this position. Um, but anyways, um, other than that, that's my only problem with this gun so far. I've only used it once, as I said. I've had it for about a month or two now, maybe a little more. Let me get this pellet off the table. Um, but yeah, so now that it's loaded, you shut the clip like that set that down um let me just shut the pellet thing so these don't go over good thing about pellets is that they don't roll so much so they're much easier to clean up after you do spill them if you spill them um so now to load the co2 into this you take this tab right here it comes on the side of the uh clip a magazine you pull it downward like that. <clears throat> Take your standard 12 gram CO2 cartridge, some Pell gun oil, or your choice of oil. Um, I would also just suggest using RWS spring and cylinder oil on this gun and pretty much all metal on metal guns and any springs um, in any clip mags or anything like that. Um, but uh, anyways, you take your 12 gram CO2 cartridge, apply one drop of Pelgun oil. Um, I made a video specifically on how to apply Pelgun oil for those of you who don't know how to or never have before. Um, so that will, I'll leave a link in the description for that or maybe at the end of the video. But um, anyways, you take that um, now, you pick up your magazine, goes bottom first like that and then all you simply do is close it like that it's a little tough to close it's definitely uh, uh, it's not real hard you know but it definitely is tougher to close then you take your now loaded clip you put it uh, slanted side forward actually like I said and you just insert it back inside like that and you simply load it up and as you can hear um, as I inserted it you heard that little gas I don't know if you guys heard that on camera but as I inserted the magazine a little bit of gas went pssst. so that was uh, the chamber or whatever holds the gas inside filling you know um, obviously this magazine works differently than other air guns because if you took the magazine out or the air the uh, 
CO2 out of other air guns, it would just fly all out and they'd empty the cartridge. But you can release the magazine on this. Um, it does release a little uh, CO2 every time, so you hear slightly every time you uh, take the mag out and reinsert it, a little CO2 go down. So I would imagine the feet per second on this just drops uh, rapidly if you change mags often. Um, so now it is loaded. Um, it is on safe. Um, as you can see, I don't know if you can see it's super small. I don't know why they made it so tiny, but let me try to focus. Uh, you can see there's a red dot right there. And there's a small F that's covered by shadow under it. So that's fire. So the up position is now on fire. Um, as you can see, if you can see, there's a small S right there. So that means it's on safe. Um, and yeah, now this thing is ready to go. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't tested this thing to see if it still fires on safe. I doubt it. You know, SIG put, seems to put a lot of effort into their guns. I don't like these rotary mags. Uh, that's my only complaint about it. Um, I don't mind pellets. But uh, I'm not the biggest fan of these rotary mags. I prefer just having the BBs or pellets just fed. Uh, you know, um, I'm not sure how what the uh, proper term is, but just the normal way, like any other BB gun. Uh, I don't like the rotary style clip. But um, anyways, but this thing is solid. Um, when you're done firing with this, um, it just won't shoot anymore. Um, the trigger just stops working. It's out of pellets. Um, the hammer does move back and forth. The slide, uh, as I said, I shot it once, and I believe it does move back and forth, but we'll see later as I record myself shooting it. Um, yeah, and other than that, I, I have no complaints about this gun. It feels heavy. My girlfriend, um, she used to work at a gun range, so she's held and actually shot sorry about that guys hold on one second okay so sorry about that guys um somebody's car alarm decided to start blaring in the center of my video um don't you hate that for all you uh video creators out there or podcasters on you're so deep into like a podcast or video and then something like that happens it's like oh man like but um Anyways, um, as I was saying, uh, my girlfriend, um, she worked at a gun range for some years, and she's actually fired and held some real six-hour uh, firearms, and she was even blown away by this. Um, she's well-versed in guns, um, so uh, she, uh, she looked at this even this morning before I did the review on it, and she just couldn't get over how real it looked. Um, compared to the actual Sig Sauer, and it really has some weight. This is probably not the heaviest gun I have, but it, it has some weight. Um, let me see if I could just... You can hear that, like, when it hits, like, it's... You know, that's heavy. You can definitely hear it. I don't want to drop it or break it or anything. But, um, yeah, the slide does rack on this. You can rack the slide, um... Again, it has no purpose. Um, it does move back and forth, I believe, as I said. Uh, we'll see in the video soon. But um, there's no reason to move it to cock it or anything. Um, I guess it's sort of like a Glock, my girlfriend was saying. I believe she was saying something like that. But um, other than that, I love the design on this. I love uh, that you have these back... Uh, grips here to, to rack the slide and you have the front one too as well um you know i love the way the grip feels i love that the grip cover has uh some grooving in the front too lets you know like lets you keep a nice firm grip on this thing um it's big in the hand on uh, the magazine extends a little further out than my wrist now um compared to all the other guns that i've reviewed um if you look at some of my other videos, this one is clearly bigger than all the other guns I've reviewed so far. And um, they'll probably only get bigger from here on out. Um, I started out small and I decided to just uh, 
go up bigger and bigger. So I'm um, doing the Umarex Legend series, but today I decided to veer off course just to break up the monotony and do the six hour M17. Um, next I'll do the Luger, as I've been saying, and then the C96 M712. Um, then I gotta get the M1A1 and the MP40, and I gotta do reviews on those. I'm dying to get those two. Um, but yeah, Sig, good job on this, man. I gotta give you a thumbs up, or two thumbs up on this one. Um, I'm not sure if everyone else agrees with me, but I can't say that this gun doesn't feel awesome in my hand. Um, you know, it is just really clearly... Clearly, they put attention into this. Um, again, I would always keep it oiled. Um, treat it like any firearm. This can seriously hurt somebody. Um, as I mentioned in my macro video, um, I saw that it only takes 150 feet per second to penetrate the human eye, and it takes about 400 feet per second to penetrate human skin or I think it was 300 I'd have to go back and look at it but I'll post it um so yeah definitely be careful with these these can cause some serious injuries um you know behind your eye not to be gross um sorry uh just a warning if you're queasy to not listen uh maybe skip ahead a few seconds but Behind your eyes is a direct passage to your brain. Um, your skull has an opening there so that your optic nerve can reach your brain. Um, so you want to be really careful with these because you can potentially uh, kill somebody or seriously hurt somebody with one of these. Um, they're not to be treated as toys because they're not. Um, in some states, they're actually considered actual firearms. You will be charged with it if you were caught with it um as if you had an actual six hour m17 on you you'll get two to five years in prison for this um uh so definitely if it's legal in your state then well, you're all good but if it's illegal in your state be very careful don't keep it loaded don't keep pellets in it um i wouldn't shoot it you know if you're a collector that's cool, collect them, but other than that, um, shooting them is probably too dangerous. Um, you can get in a lot of trouble for that. Uh, so just be very careful um, with any CO2 gun or air gun. That includes airsoft, you know, any pellet gun, anything. Um, pneumatic pump guns, pneumatic especially, because those can reach uh, some high FPSs. Um, I think I heard the other day that the Glock I forget which Glock it was, but they said it was only one or 1,500 feet per second, and there's some CO2 guns that go way faster than that. There's some that go up to 2,000, so um, you can see why they'd be considered dangerous, you know, because you can really kill someone with one of these. Um, but anyways, yeah, to get off a sad and uh, down note, um, this thing is dope. Um, I would suggest buying this if you can. I don't know what's going on with Amazon. Um, Sig Sauer website still offers it on Amazon. All you can find right now is the airsoft versions, which have the orange tip. As you can see, there's no orange tip. Um, it's just the uh, a barrel with uh, the pellet barrel inside. Um, when you rack it back, there's a. Uh, I'm not sure what this is called actually. I gotta read into that um but yeah that's uh about it uh there's not much to say about this uh there's no complaints um so far i haven't had any jam bbs like i said i've only used it once um nothing jammed on um, the trigger kind of sucks so we'll see how that goes again um but still nothing jammed um one thing i did actually now that i'm thinking about it i remember um I'd, I fired all 20 shots, so I thought, and so I took the magazine out. When I looked, there was two that were not fired. They were still stuck in the clip mag, but they were warped from, I guess, the CO2 blasting at them, so I couldn't fire them. I had to take them out. Um, so I'll see if that happens again, um, and I'll let you know, and I'll show you. So, uh, yeah, that's the 6 hour M17. Um... Like I said, Sig Sauer's site still offers it. Amazon currently is not for some reason. Uh, so I'll put links to everything 
where you can find this, the laser, um, the pellets, the pellet gun oil, the RWS spring cylinder oil, and then, uh, oh, I didn't bring my, uh, gun cleaning kit. I forgot it in my bedroom, but, um, I'll leave a link and a picture for you in the video, um, so you can get a gun cleaning kit for really cheap for these. Um, it's actually a 22 caliber and a point one seven seven caliber uh gun cleaning kit so um it works for twenty twos and pellet guns or CO two guns. So um you don't want to accidentally stick the twenty two caliber um cleaning uh tools inside of these because you can seriously damage your guns. Um so be careful with that. Obviously the smaller tools as you'll see in the picture are for the CO two guns. Um but yeah, anyway, so that's the Sig Sauer M17. Um, I would take dismantle this for you, but I don't want to do that because I fear of damaging it or not being able to put it back together. Um, I have some 1911s that are full metal blowback that I have dismantled and I have put back together fine. And they work fine, um, but I haven't done that with this, so I feel like leave well enough alone you know like why dismantle it if I don't have to um in order to oil it all I have to do is get into these little cracks right there just a couple of drops of oil rack the slide a few times clean it down you know let the oil drip in there a little bit um and that's it really you know um I try to keep these in top notch condition um, I love the tan color of this. I believe it's nicknamed the Coyote. Um, I saw that on Amazon. Um, I'm not sure why, but uh, I do like the tan color of this. Um, I prefer black, but for some reason the tan on this doesn't bother me. I can't see... Uh, I guess you can see through the video, but it is two-tone tan, so the top part... The slide is much, oh, it's not much, it's a little darker than the bottom part. So this whole part here is a bit lighter than the slide, uh, but they're both a tan. Um, this looks more of like, has like olive tan. I don't know if that makes, is even a color, but um, the rest of it's black. Um, where the shell would eject is black. Um, but yeah, so uh, anyways, this is Paul for Replica Gun Reviews, and this is the... Sig Sauer M17.177 uh, Blowback CO2 gun. It's full metal. Real hefty. It's a beast as I said. I suggest you all go get you one. Uh, we'll do some tests with these. Um, see how accurate it is and everything. And I'll see you then. Peace guys. Alright guys. Let me just see if I can get a good view for you. I think that's good enough. I'm gonna put 20 rounds into my new pellet trap. Um, and here we go. Guys, let me just see if I can get a good, nice close up for you. There we go. Get off safety.
and that's it. Let me see if any uh, got stuck in the actual clip, like I said. Um, see, as you can see, you can remove the magazine from the gun without all the CO2 spilling, so that you can just simply, as I showed you before, remove the pellet clip and reload it. Um, but this is the issue. Let's see if any got stuck this time to even show you. Yeah, see, uh, one did not eject. Um, this time, last couple times it was two. Um, that might just be a defect with this uh, specific clip. I don't think that that shouldn't be a defect with every one. I just probably got yeah, that unlucky one. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I have to take something now. Uh, like this. I'll show you how to get it out. You take a little knife like that, something like sharp that has like a hook, preferably, and you just literally just fish it out. Um, yeah, see? And that's it. And it just comes out. Um, the rotary part of this magazine, uh, see the lighting sucks, uh, actually does come out, so you can actually take this whole belt out. Um, but yeah, now I'll go on to, um, I guess some, uh, penetration testing. Okay guys, so here's the uh, milk carton aftermath. Um, I was aiming for the uh, bowl and basket uh, logo, so I have to aim higher, I guess, because um, everything was a bit low. Um, but out of 20 rounds, uh, 18 ended up not even warping, getting caught right in the water. They never made it through the trap. Uh, two made it back. None got stuck in the magazine this time, finally, for the first time. Um, two came through the back um, and got caught in the pellet trap. So, um, only two, actually. So this is 50 p FPS higher than the uh, Makarov was. And the Makarov, uh, I dumped the whole magazine into another milk carton and um, the water caught every shot. So... We finally got a couple through, um, and as I said, I'm just going to be attempting to just go either with this equal or higher FPS from here on out and just see what kind of damage we can do. So next I'm going to shoot the uh, phone again, the GS5, and, you know, the uh, PSP, see if I can get anything to do with that PSP. That PSP screen has been pretty tough so far. Uh, but yeah, so I'll see you guys soon. Alright guys, so this time as you see, I got an actual tin can. Um, so this will be my first time trying it with pellets. They flatten like that. Um, usually they flatten all the way. But uh, I guess the phone did that. You can see some of the phone's glass even got like fused to the pellet itself. But um, alright, so this will be from about same 10 feet away. Alright. Ah, none of them are penetrating, they're all just bouncing back at me. Alright guys, so this time, as I said, I got a proper tin can, um, and as you can see, not, well, they didn't penetrate 
uh, through the back, but as you can see, it split the can a couple times anyway from denting it. But on the front side, where is the front side? This is where I hit it a bunch of times. Well, I did was ding it up really good. Um, I think those two might have went. I don't know if they actually went. They weren't in the can. Nothing came through the back, so nothing, I guess they just bounced out. They were the ones that probably hit me. Um, Cause they were all flying back at me pretty fast, actually. Um, but yeah, so that's the extent, I guess. Right, guys, here's the pretty beat up GS5. I'm gonna try to hit it from 10 feet away in a spot that's not already hit. All right. Stand that up again, actually. Let's see what it did. And, uh, I can't even tell. I'm gonna try to aim for like right there. Oh wow! That did. Pretty significant damage from what I can see from here. Alright, I think the GS5 had enough. Uh, yeah, that thing's hit. Nothing. Still nothing except the Daisy Power Line 5501 was the only one to actually penetrate the glass so far. Alright guys, here is the badly beaten up uh, Galaxy S5. Um, as you can see again, um, the BBs seem to penetrate deeper um, and the pellets just did a wider um, area of damage, but not, they didn't go as deep, um, but yeah, uh, I don't think I could get this off with one hand, let me try, I'll show you the inside, um, uh, there's Apollo, there's my fourth cat, say hi Apollo, that's my first cat, my little fatty, but, uh, yeah, so, um, as you can see, once again, the Daisy was the only one to penetrate fully. The rest of them, that was the PPKS. Uh, the rest of the dents are probably from the macro. I doubt, I can still feel the BBs from the macro of inside the phone, actually. Um, but uh, the pellets, I guess because they're pellets and they flatten, um, they just don't have penetration power yet. Um, and we're at 430 FPS right now, so, uh, yeah, that's the GS5. I'm gonna actually put this down, because there's little pieces of screen glass falling off. It's like sand, almost. I'll uh, go on to the next one. Alright, guys, so, this is gonna be about 10 feet away. I'm gonna shoot the, uh, old LG Stylo this time, since it has more room. Alright? guys so here we actually had the opposite happen with the LG Stylo um the BBs did more uh, had a wider area of damage than the pellets the pellets just took these little holes out um so I guess the glass was just different um but yeah uh, I didn't want to shoot this one too much because I actually want to see if I could get something at a higher FPS to actually go fully through this phone um but, um, yeah, as you can see, 430 feet per second with a fresh CO2 cartridge, that's what the M17 can do to a phone. Um, yeah, and that's it. Alright, everybody, so it's time for the sad PSP again. Let's see if I could get uh, anything any deeper than we have already.
see what that did. Uh, I would say that's definitely... Oh, this one. Wow, I didn't even notice that. It just took like a hole out of the glass. I'm going to hit it one or two more times to see what happens. Actually, you know what? Let's just do one point blank. Oh, damn. Yeah, look at that big hole it took out of the glass. But it didn't penetrate anyway. That's some strong glass on the PSP, man. So guys, as you can see, our sad PSP is looking a little sadder today. Um, the pellets seem to, versus BBs, BBs go deeper it seems. The pellets create wider damage or an area of damage. Um, as you can see, it took out these two chunks. Um, I'm not, I can't remember which one was point blank. I have to go back and look at the footage again, but um... Yeah, nothing penetrated so far, and I was, if I could get this open, yeah, you can see everything still looks intact inside. There's no dents yet, nothing made it that far through yet, uh, but we'll get something through this eventually, definitely. That's my goal, is to get something through this, make it ultra sad. Oh, there's monkey video crashing again. But yeah, let's go on to the next one. Alright guys, so I figured instead of just popping the CO2 out and wasting it, I'd just uh, unload the rest of it into this pillow. bouncing off of it as you can see I've shot it with the Makarov and the PPKS and they all penetrated so the BB seem to do a lot more penetrating than pellets do so far okay everybody so that was the review on the uh, M17 um, six hour M17 uh, I'll keep this short and sweet since this was a kind of long review um, but um, anyways, I think this is an awesome gun. Um, I definitely suggest picking one up. Uh, now that I've shot it a few times, I've had no issues with it other than uh, pellet occasionally getting stuck inside of the clip and not ejecting. But other than that, no uh, jams, no misfires or anything like that. Um, nothing, you know, that just looks shady or anything. It feels really good. It's hefty. Um, Obviously, as you can see, it didn't have much penetration power, um, but that could be an argument, for, you know, pellets versus BBs. Um, anyway, so, as I said in my last video in about the uh, Makarov, I was thinking of either going next with continuing doing the Umarex Legends series and going with the Luger, um, or I was thinking of going with the Umarex SA-10. Um, I was going to go with the Luger, but then I figured I'd let you guys decide, so you guys let me decide. I mean, you guys decide what you want me to do uh, eat next, the Luger or the SA-10. Um, just leave a comment, um, and I'll leave links to everything that I mentioned in the video in the description. I'll leave a link for the laser and everything. Um, and that's it. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.